Hello everybody, this is Sherry at djsendu.blogspot.com and I am playing with a new camera setup. Uh, I'm trying to test it out, so bear with me through this particular video as we're trying to figure it out. I'm super excited about this um, setup and I'm hopeful that it's going to work really well for me. But I also needed to make a card. Now, I already made a card um, and I used this image. I went into my background stash and I found this image that I had had out of alcohol ink. So we've got some oranges and some blues. I would imagine there's some blue denim in there or some denim. I, I don't even know, maybe terracotta. I don't know what the colors are. Um, it was in my stash. It's old. And then I took this uh, stamp set. This is a THMM, one of the mixed media stamp sets that Tim does for um, Joann's. And THMM116 and I used this suit coat and this top hat and then from Simon Says I have this butterfly stamp set with this thank you and I really have been using this thank you quite a bit lately and I stamped both of those um, sets using just my regular little archival jet black ink pad. So I had the card all put together popped up on foam and I had decided to see about putting maybe a few sequins on it so I was kind of playing with it and then I was like you know it looks I like it it's simple but I bet I could make a shaker card out of this so I am going to make a shaker card now this is not the first shaker card that I've ever made However, um, this will be the first one that I've done quite like this. I've seen other people do it. I've wanted to try it. So I thought, why not try it on camera with a new camera setup? What could possibly go wrong? So I have this piece of packaging um, from a stencil that I just got in the mail today. And I'm going to use that for my, um, my package on the outside. So what I'm gonna do first is turn this over backwards and I pulled out some score tape. And we're gonna start with that. The score tape's old, but it's still sticky. So I think I'm gonna be okay. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna start by putting my score tape down. Whoops, don't want that. Putting, putting my score tape down on four sides. Um, now, I'm going to put the score tape on four sides, but I'm not going to um, seal up the four sides quite yet or even unseal them. So there's two. I probably should be a little more precise in doing this, but oh well. Again, what could possibly go wrong, right? All right, let's take that piece off. And then the final piece will go on top. This one, actually gonna go a little bit big, but the goal is to fit it between because what you definitely don't want is to have sequins coming out. So I'm gonna set that and just kind of butt that right up against the other. Okay, so we have our um, four sides. I'm all ready to go. And now I have this piece of packaging. Again, this is not a way that I've ever made a shaker card, but I mean, people do it all the time and it makes sense why waste the packaging that you have. And you know, this, this packaging for the Tim Holtz stencils, it's a perfect size for an A2 size card, right? So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm gonna just cut off this end because it was being a, a little bit of a pain. Um, so I'm gonna cut off that end and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to just cut, slit up the sides because I have a little bit of wiggle room, but not a whole lot. So my panel size is uh, four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. Um, so again, I've got a little tiny bit of wiggle room, but I don't have a ton of wiggle room. Okay. So that's going to sit there. I'm going to just do a little bit of extra up here. And there we're cut off. Okay. 
So now I am going to um, take the tape off of three of my four sides here. So one, two, and I probably should have grabbed my tweezers or something since I don't have very much in the way of fingernails now. And I'm just going to set my panel on this, leaving edge around it. And then I'm going to fold up and over my score tape. I do have a, a roll of the red line tape and I actually was planning to use that, um, but I didn't, It was. it's the narrower one, and I just wasn't sure that was gonna give me enough tape. Okay, so I've taped up the two sides. Now I'm going to take my bone folder, and I'm just gonna kind of burnish that down. Now there's two reasons for that. First of all, I wanna burnish it into the tape really well, but the other reason is, is I wanna get a crease on that plastic because it, it wasn't, designed to fold there. So now before I cut, um, or before I punch up the bottom section, I personally think I just need to go in and kind of make a slit here so that I can get a better fold as I come around the corner. And I'm gonna do that on all four corners. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to get off camera. I'm gonna do that on all four corners because I want to be able to get a good fold, but I don't want holes in the corner, if that makes sense. So I just cut a little slit. Now I'll come up and fold those over the top. Again, I'm gonna grab my bone folder. I'm gonna burnish that down. And I do have these little tails I'm a, because I want to make sure that I've got, I think my corners are really good. So I'm gonna feel okay about just going ahead and clipping that one off. I hope that's not a mistake. I mean, it's just a card, it's just paper, right? Just paper. All right, make sure it's all flat. So when I pop that over, you can see that glare coming in there. And now I am ready to add my sequins. So I have these sequins and I can't even remember where I got them but I thought that this was kind of a fun color. Um, this kind of goldy, orangey color. And then I have some white ones here. I didn't really like the thought of adding the blue that I had um, in there. So I didn't pull those. But I think rather than try to dump them in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my little triangles here and mix them in that way, I think I will have a little bit better success and be a little bit less likely to dump them all over myself. I'm gonna go with probably fewer rather than more to start with, although that seems like a lot, so I may have done too many. But I wanna be able to make sure I've got plenty to have a good shake, but yeah, I've got, that's more than enough. I probably didn't need that many. So I've got a good shake in there. Um, just a couple more sequins in there, we'll put that over. Okay, so now we're ready to do our last section. So I'm gonna undo the tape here. And again, I've got those corners that I snipped, so I'm going to go ahead and pull, snip those off before I fold it over this time. That little guy's trying to escape. And then I'm gonna lay it down, making sure that it's flat. And then I'm going to hold it tightly. And I'm gonna press it down just like that. Now I'm going to take my bone folder again and burnish it down. So now I've got this fun little shake, shakey shake going on there for my card. So there's that part of the card. Um, I want to kind of knock them down at the bottom or the top. Um, I, I could have, I think it probably was a little bit too much on the sequins, but it'll be fine. So let me put those away because I don't know about you, but 
I do not have time to clean up sequins that I've managed to scatter all over the craft room. So now I have foam tape because I still want some dimension. Now I am not worried at all about mailing this because this is going to be a hand delivered card. So I'm not worried about the increased bulk that I'll have from the foam tape. There's already plenty of bulk in there from the sequins. Um, if I was mailing this, I would probably consider putting a um, putting it perhaps in a padded envelope. That would be one option. Another option, um, depending on how far and how trusting I was feeling that day of the postal system, maybe I would just put it in a regular envelope. Either way, it's going to require extra postage. And so just, just know that you're not going to just toss this in the mail without some extra cost involved. Still think probably a um, padded envelope would be the safest way to go. So super fun there. Okay, so I have my card base, and this is just an A2 size card that I cut my own bases. I believe this was probably cut using Nina 110 pound uh solar white but it could be another brand I, I don't recall but I it's a portrait style card so it will open like that on the top so now I have my um, foam now I am going to pull those tabs actually I'm going to go ahead and just pull them completely off and in order to give myself just a little extra wiggle room I'm going to put down some Gina K Connect. The purpose of this is not necessarily to provide more glue. I'm sure I've opened this Gina K Connect. I have to grab a different glue bottle. Rather than mess with that, I'll just grab something that I know I've opened. Um, the reason that I put this liquid glue on is um, and it doesn't take a lot, but the purpose is to provide myself a little bit of extra wiggle room while I'm trying to tape it down. That way it won't just immediately adhere and be all catawampus. This way instead, I can, if it's not quite straight, I can slide it a little bit and give myself a little bit of extra play while it's getting set. Especially where if I, if I put my head directly over it, I'm gonna get my head in the camera. So that seems to be pretty straight. So I will go ahead and shake that or uh, press that down. And then we've got a little bit of shaky shake. So there's my card. Not bad, simple. Uh, again, because the stash or because the card was um, the, the bait or the background was already in my stash that uh, cut that step out of it. And now, um, I can get this given to its recipient. So thanks so much for stopping by today. And remember, take some time to enjoy the little things. Have a great day. Bye.